She had the mask, and she knew the name of the Djinn of Time. Brida. 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 If the wearer of the Brida. mask speaks the name of the Djinn of Time, he can retrieve things past. I can't reach it. How could I? But Sadia didn't waken the Djinn. Why not? <gasps> Geron? Geron, can you hear me? I think I've solved the riddle. It's a little complicated. There are so many little pieces. There's only one thing missing. And then we can finally complete the story. Then I'll ask the staff to change you back. I promise. Can you do me one more favor first? Sadia's ruby has a crack. You need to repair it. Can you do that for me? Please, Geron, repair the ruby. Thank you. And now let me try something. I pray to the gods that I'm not mistaken. Vedan Faskadan, Esplas Tequatan, Humurilor Gras, Ferogoran, Hilbemutir Gerol Falan, Huntir Quatan, Feluntir Sodan. Geron? Are you still there? If so, then you should be able to cast the staff's first spell. Please give me a sign that it worked. I was right. Thank you. Thank you, Geron. Oh, <laughs> you're probably wondering where you are. The staff created this place, a burial chamber of a mogul in the middle of the Andagastrian forest. Isn't that impressive? Leave the mask and come to me. He's here. I'll be right back. Brider. Brider! When I get left behind again. Nuri. I'll try to send Nuri a vision. That's it! I'll send Nuri to the mountain, and then along the course of the brook, until she reaches the fire. I hope it works. Thank the gods. I'm starting to remember something. I know how I can transform myself back. I don't know how much ask. I better take care of myself first. All right, here we go. No, no, I'm too weak. The mask doesn't have enough power left to change me back. It was all for nothing. Oh, finally. Fai, is everything all right? Oh, yes. My stiff old bones haven't felt this young in ages. Thanks, Nuri. Who are you? That doesn't matter now. Will you promise to wait for me here? All right. I'll be right back. It's been 450 years since I, a talking staff with no memories, kindled the light in my prison and saw a strange woman 
who would change my life forever. Her story began in this chamber, and between these walls we will end it together. Merhaba, Geron. Welcome. You were able to free yourself. What does all this mean? Where are we? Ask him. Indeed. Ask me. You should know that I've waited a long time for this day, and would not like to wait much longer. But if you have a great many questions... What's going to happen here? So you still haven't figured out why I sent you my memories? Why you're here? I am here because Fahi promised to change Nuri back into a fairy if I helped him with a little riddle. No one said anything about ensouled magic staves, flying fortresses and strange dreams. Life is full of surprises, isn't it? Ha! You laugh, but I wouldn't have believed that one day someone would rescue me from my dungeon. That I was to climb mountains without legs and wrestle without arms with demons. I would have laughed if someone had told me a princess will appear to you and, despite your strange form, show you the greatest wonders of the world. Oh, how I would have laughed. Okay, but that doesn't explain why we're here. You know that Sadia and I were separated. Ah, golden time together came to an end. When I finally found a way to leave the Gorian Desert, centuries had passed. I wanted to know if Sadia had done it. If she had become the great heroine she always wanted to be. I wanted to hear how her name was whispered in the streets in awe. Sadia al-Kabir. Sadia the Great. The heroine who once... But no one had ever heard of her. So I continued and expanded my search. I wanted to know what happened to her after our separation. I followed her trail back to Draconia. I found the Adept's journal and the Jinn of Times's mask. But Sanja's real fate remained a mystery to me. Finally, I met Fahi and asked him to bring me here. A man named Alric had taken her ruby from Draconia and brought it to Undergast. He sought the mask in order to bring back his deceased wife, but he found only the gemstone. Is all this really important? Does it matter how she died? She's dead. We can't change that. You're wrong. You will determine what happened to her. I don't understand. The Garden of Oblivion, Geron. I read the journal to the end. After her return, Sadia went into the Garden of Oblivion and never came out again. Nothing that happens in the Garden has actually happened until someone talks about it. Outside the Garden. And since Sadia has been forgotten since that day, her fate has never been told. And thus never completed. I see. If we tell the end of Sadja's adventures in the garden, then the story becomes true. And if we're mistaken... Satanav's invisible hand will punish us for our sacrilege. I think I've explained enough about our wondrous meeting. Are you ready, Garon? Just a moment. What about the inscription on the burial chamber? You mean the stone and the scarab? Fahi believes that the inscription is the key to everything. But as apt as his intuition may be, in this case, he's mistaken. The riddle is apparently only a strange jotting on the margins, a random blemish on an otherwise monumental painting. There's nothing else to say about it. Sadja was taken to the burial chamber to read trivial inscriptions, and, as proud as she was, she refused. That's all. What's Fahi's role in all this? Fahi is a man of many talents. He has a feeling for tales, and he's good at solving riddles. In addition, he had a wagon and a tent in which I could hide on my long journey. He is helping me solve the riddle, and in return, I protect his business from looters. That is our agreement. So he's actually harmless. <laughs> Fahi is the most harmless man I've ever met in my 3,000 years. I was sorry to petrify him, but it was the only way to save him from your fellow citizens. At the waterfall, you promised to change Nuri back to her old form. And I will. But first, we must complete Sadja's story. Why are you here, Bryder? Sadja's story doesn't have anything to do with you. Geron, there's nothing left for me here. I'm a deserter. My own comrades are hunting me. This is my only refuge. Please. Even if you still don't understand, let me bring it to an end. I'm sure everything will be fine again. 
the world will never be as fine as it once was. What if one of us ends Sadia's story and is wrong? If Satinav learns that the tale we tell can't possibly be true, then he'll make it unhappen and declare the teller guilty of sacrilege. Don't worry, Geron. We won't make a mistake. I've thought everything through very carefully. All right. Then put the mask on the bust of my old master and let us begin. Thank you, Geron. Are you ready now? Yes. Let's get this over with. Thank you, Geron. Which of you will now step forward and tell the story to its end? I'll do it. Very well. I'll now tell you of Sage's passage into the garden, as it is written in the Adept's journal. Listen closely. At the end, you must tell me how the story ends. After her return from the battlefield, Sadja was only a shadow of herself. She had seen the horrors of the Nether Hells, an ocean of destruction and death. She was the only survivor, but the rest of the world did not care. Sadja's great dream had failed. She wandered the halls of Draconia like a ghost. She didn't eat, and she only slept when exhaustion forced her to. On the fourth day, a young adept saw her at the threshold to the portal. He asked her where she was going. It was cold in the mountains, and she could have become lost. Whereupon she answered, I'm going to the garden to break my being. The boy immediately ran to the air adept, but help arrived too late. When they entered the garden, all that they found was the mask and Sajja's ruby next to it. There was no sign of her. Out of fear of challenging Satinav, it was decided that they would forget the incident. No one was allowed to speculate about what had happened on that day. The mask and the ruby were taken to Draconia. The garden was sealed, and Sadia's fate was forgotten. Until today. It's now up to you, Geron, to finish her story. But remember, one mistake, and the consequences will be terrible. I know. Sadia entered the garden. She sat on the ground. She took out the mask. She looked into the mask and... And... She read the magic spell, memorized it, put on the mask and destroyed her memory. Why did you interrupt me? I was afraid you would say the wrong thing. Then, she disappeared into the depths of the garden like a soulless waif, and was never seen again. It is done. I had always hoped it would be otherwise. But I was mistaken. Are you crying? Of course I'm crying. My princess just died. Oh, well... I guess that's it then. That was the end just now, wasn't it? Yes. No. Since Sadia used the mask, her memories are now in the mask, and thus, the true name of the Jinn of Time. What are you doing? Fadan feskadan es plastaquatan, humuri lor gras ferel goran, hil bemotir kerul felan, tuntir katan filontir sodan. Ah, I've been awakened. The Jinn of Time. Tell me, child, what is your wish? I'm sorry, Geron, but there's nothing left for me in this time. As if there had ever been anything for me here. There are no heroic princesses, no ancient tombs, no... Flying fortresses, only endless honor guards, latrine duty, one triviality after another. When was the golden age lost? When princesses still dreamed of battles and the world was filled with magic? I wish it was all as it used to be. Your wish is my command.
brighter. The girl is now gone. Her longing now rules over her existence. It is my task to fulfill that longing. To extinguish the Grey Present and bring the past to life again. The forest is starting to change. What did she do? Geron, come quickly. Geron, I've been thinking. That's nice, but it won't help us any. Bryder told Sadia's story to the end. She had Sadia put on the mask and draw out all her memories in the Garden of Oblivion so that everything has now happened exactly like that. And she read out Sadia's memories with the ruby I mean, Bryder did that, and now she's possessed by the Djinn of Time, and... Calm yourself, Geron. I'm supposed to calm down? We have to do something! You're right, and we can only do something if we prove that Bryder was wrong, that Sadia did not put on the mask. You forget that there's still a part of the riddle we have not solved. The Scarab? As if a pointless riddle could save us all! Do you have a better idea? Look around. We're in a copy of the burial chamber. Perhaps you'll find the crucial clue somewhere. Bring it to me. And perhaps we can solve the riddle once and for all. All I found was the ruby. Give it to me. Giacomo Nauta told me you were an amateur mage. Is that true? Yeah, I can break things. <laughs> well, I can also do a bit of magic. If I hold something in my hand, I can catch a glimpse of its past. That was the main reason the staff chose me as his companion, you see. Now, let's see what story this stone tells. Hmm... Curious. When the ruby was found after Sadia's disappearance in the garden, it had a crack. And the reversal spell the Ore Adept had woven into it had vanished utterly. The mages had to reapply it completely. But... There's more. I see... A palace garden. And in it, two children. This is a brooch from Meng Villa. My father gave it to me. Oh, can I see? There. And here, a ruby from the dwarf tunnels in the brazen sword. It's so beautiful. When I'm Caliph, I'll have all the treasures in Avastan gathered in my palace. Fazar will be more radiant than in the times of the great moguls. My subjects will lie at my feet for all eternity. You'll be a good ruler, Kasim. All the history books will tell of you. Ha! Do you see the sign on my arm? It's the calligraphy of my sovereignty, the sign of my dynasty. The whole world will bow before this symbol. There are great times ahead of us, Sadja. Truly great times. I see a prince and a princess playing together. He's trying to impress her. What could this mean? So Sadja and the prince really were siblings. Wait. There's more. Something's happening. A palace guard arrives. Let me go! <laughs> You're so pathetic. Isn't that how you like to be treated? 
like the dog that you are. At least I have my own teeth. <laughs> you please me, Sadja, more than I had hoped. The prince is tormenting the princess. The guard holds her tight. She's at his mercy, but why? Maybe there was no reason, and she was punished unjustly. Hmm. They finally let her go. She remains alone in the courtyard. Really? What are you doing? Are you tattooing yourself? I'm writing my own dynasty. Do you even know what the word means? Dynasty? You can't simply write greatness into your blood. You're either born with it or not. I'll prove it to you. Do you think you could ever be greater than I? You're amusing. Guards! Throw her back into the gutter where you found her. I'm done having my fun with her. Then fetch me a new girl. Sadia wasn't a princess at all. She was only a poor girl from the streets. So what? I, I don't know, but... <laughs> What's so funny? Don't you understand? The solution to the riddle. Sadia's words outside the burial chamber. It was so obvious all along. Oh. We were fooling ourselves. Now, go into the burial chamber and tell it to the djinn. Then everything will be all right again. Rider, or whoever you are, come out. Why do you obstruct her wish? She's unhappy. She wishes to be back in a time where everything was still good. You, of all people, should understand that. But it no longer matters what you think. The ritual is almost complete. A new ancient kingdom will grow from the oak wood. Not if I can prove that you, that Bryda was wrong. And she was indeed wrong. Satya went into the garden, she took the mask, and she spoke the incantation. So did it happen, and so shall it remain. It will. Listen, let me start at the beginning. Satya entered the garden, she sat down and pulled out the mask. She looked into the mask. And read the magic spell. Whereupon everything happened as Bryder already said. Wait, I was mistaken. Sadia looked into the mask. And despaired in herself and her inability. Why should she despair? She had my promise of blessed oblivion. All she had to do was read the incantation. No. I'm sorry, Bryda, but Sadia wasn't as brilliant as you think. She felt persecuted and restless. She wanted to forget her own past and become someone else. She wasn't a princess, just a poor girl from the streets. And as such, she couldn't even read. No. Forgive me, Bryda. That's that then. The riddle is finally solved. <laughs> Why such a long face, Charon? Yes, my friend. What plagues you so? Nothing. Why are you so happy anyway? Sadia's fate proved to be false. You don't know any more now than you did before. Very true. Very true. But perhaps not. Oh, forget it. I'm sick of riddles. Yes. Leave the dear boy in peace, Aleph. Fulfill his wish, and let's move on. Yes. Travelling is nice. 
I want to go to the sea. Wait just a moment. It's up to you, my friend. Do you want me to change her back? But I can only restore her body, not her memories. I fought so hard for it. I want everything to be the way it was. So be it. It is done. Nuri? Nuri, can you hear me? Hmm? What's going on? Who are you? My name is Geron. How do you feel? Strange. I'm cold. What happened? Come to the fire and rest. Then I'll tell you everything. Who you are, where you come from, and what wonderful adventures the two of us have had. Adventures? It all began last autumn. Crows had attacked the royal palace, and King Everdon asked me to come up with a way to stop the plague. My search led me to a strange cave near a waterfall. And thus ends the tale. Did you know that it would come to this? <sighs> oh, how can I know what you planned? And what was mere fortune? Until today, I would have sworn that the mask destroyed you. But that can't be. We know that now. Now, just so I don't make a mistake, there are only two possibilities as to what could have happened to you back then. The first the more likely, has now proven to be false, which leaves only the second. <sighs> I mustn't make a mistake. Here we go. When Sadia entered the garden, she had the mask with her, but no ruby. Yet, when the mask was found, there was a ruby beside it. Now, it may be that it was Sadia's ruby that was thrown into the garden earlier by the prince, but what if it was another? Oh dear. Oh dear. There's no going back now. Satinav! I say that there was not one, but two rubies. The real one was lost. The fake was taken from the garden by the mages and is now here in my hand. Sadja couldn't read, but with my mask she could do magic. She could turn plants to stone. She could turn people to stone. What is a ruby, if not just another stone? There. And now to you, my dear. You descended into the deepest tombs. And you climbed the highest mountains. You danced with wind spirits and wrestled with demons. Abandoned by the gods, forgotten by time. Sharizad, your time has finally come. <laughs>